Hi, this is Jesse Skibby, Chief Compliance Officer with Kirkpatrick Price. Thank you for joining us today. We're continuing in our video series of Navigating High Trust CSF Compliance. This is video number four in our series, so just take you back really briefly of where we've been so far. We've talked about who High Trust is, a high level overview of what the CSF is and why it was developed. We also talked about the controls specifically, how they're made up, how to apply them to your organization based on the risk factors involved, how to apply the levels. Um, we also talked about in our last video the assessment types and the report options. So that's all really leading you to where we are today. So today's discussion is really going to be about the scoring mechanism, so how the controls are scored. So in this situation, we're going to be talking about whether you're doing a self-assessment or whether you're doing a validated assessment, you must score your compliance with the controls according to the maturity model. This makes sense knowing that the, the CSF was really developed based on ISO principles. So if you're familiar with the plan, do, check, act model, which really starts with direction and tone at the top, you know, what's implemented, and then um, continuing that cycle of improvement by monitoring and by acting on those, on those controls in motion. So the maturity model scoring that's used by High Trust and the CSF for either a self-assessment or a validated assessment are really five areas. So beginning with policy. So policy, procedures, is it implemented, is it measured and managed? Those are the five different areas. So policy we're all pretty familiar with. So are the requirements stated in the policy or standard that are understood by the organization? So in this situation, what you're doing is you're looking through the CSF, you're looking for those implementation requirements, and as an assessor, we're looking for, is this listed in a policy? Is this communicated with employees who need to know? And then the second area, which involves procedures, obviously follow that policy. They assign responsibility, they give further instruction on carrying out that overall policy. So taking those implementation requirements in mind, you're going to want to know that if they're documented within procedures or if that procedure is understood by those that are responsible for following that procedure. And then we're also testing if that control has been implemented. So taking into consideration, again, those implementation requirements, part of our testing as an assessor and part of your internal testing, doing a self-assessment, is measuring out, is that implemented? Is this control and the intent of this control being followed? Can it be tested? Can it be tested for operational effectiveness? So again, policy, procedure, implemented. Now these three areas make up about 75% of the overall score. So high trust realizing, again, it's very much a walk before you run scenario. In the maturity model, as far as achieving certification, these are the three most important areas to make sure that are in place for every control. Now the other two that make up the other 25% of the 100% of the score are measured and managed. So measured meaning can you put some sort of a statistical analysis? Can you use a calculation to measure the performance of that control? So again, taking into consideration the implementation requirements, is that control, um, how is it being measured? How is it being measured for success? Um, and then the other thing, obviously, you can't really manage something unless you have a measurement to tell you how it's reacting. So measured and managed very much go together. Managed is are you taking that feedback from your measurement and are you actually acting upon it? Are you making improvements? So again, this is very much falls along the lines of the plan, do, check, act model. Um, it's a cycle of continuous improvement. It is the core functionality of an effective information security management system. And this is the model that High Trust utilizes and we as assessors use to manage your overall compliance with that control objective. One of the most important things to understand, and I think this is missed initially when you first download the CSF and it's your first take of looking at it, is you really don't know or maybe have an understanding of how controls are scored. So I really want to walk you through that today because if you're going for the validated assessment, this is what the assessor is going to be evaluating you again. So this is what would dictate whether or not you were certified. So in order to achieve certification, you must have a three plus or a three with a corrective action plan um, in each of the subject 19 assessment categories to be able to achieve certification. So this is something that you initially start, you evaluate yourself using the tool, and I'm gonna walk you through that. The assessor comes and either agrees or disagrees with your evaluation after some testing, and then High Trust gathers all that information and decides whether or not you are meeting compliance and can achieve certification. So that kind of from a high level is how that works. So 
To dig in deeper to how the controls are actually scored, we're presented you with this graphic. Now this happens behind the scenes when you're working in the MyCSF tool, but I think it's important to understand how the calculation works. Because if you're reading through all the implementation requirements, you have to understand, okay, am I somewhat compliant with this control? based on the calculation, am I fully compliant with the control? And there's a lot of different categories and areas in which you're scored. So just kind of stepping through this, we have across the top, we have policies, procedures, implemented, measured, and managed. So it's really important to understand that 75% of your overall score, meaning 75% of that total that goes towards that one through three rating, comes from policy, procedure, and implemented. That's because the most important thing in this walk before you run scenario that High Trust has in place is that the important piece from a risk standpoint is that it's in policy, it's in procedure, people know how to do it, and it's fully implemented, meaning it can be tested to prove effectiveness. Measured and managed are more of those mature organizations have systems in place to measure the performance of a control. So think about internal audit, Think about gathering statistics and things like vulnerability scanning. Think about antivirus. You know, think about ways that you can apply a statistical analysis to how effective a control is. Maybe it's every time I test it, it's 90% effective. Maybe it's every time I test it, it fails 30% of the time. Whatever that measurement is, think about measured as far as testing and monitoring of controls. Managed is really on the side of, okay, now I'm going to take those measurements and I'm going to make changes to our environment based on that statistical analysis. So it's really that continuous cycle of improvement. It's about policy, procedure implemented, and then measuring it and managing it from a monitoring standpoint. So again, across the top, you're looking at policy, procedure implemented, measured, and managed. Now along those lines, you have a, uh, an opportunity to receive a zero to 100 score, even in those categories from a subcategory level. So let's say, for example, policy. Your policy may, con may consider 0% of the implementation requirements. In that case, you would receive no score for that particular item. Um, but for example, if you had some of the CSF implementation requirements are being met, um, or there's some sort of a, an ad hoc way of testing and understanding of that, you may be able to achieve 75% in that category. So as you're answering questions in the MyCSF tool, or as you're measuring your own compliance, even just using the high trust documentation, just keep in mind that this is how you're going to be scored when you're going for either um, a validated assessment or you're doing the self-assessment evaluation. So you need to know if you're meeting the control, if you're meeting some of the control, or if you're meeting none of it. That's really kind of how the scoring model works. So the important thing to take away from this is not that you need to be expected to know all these calculations that are going on behind the scenes. The important point that I want to make, if you're a smaller organization and you really don't have a robust internal audit department or a way to really effectively and cost effectively do the measuring and the managing that is necessary to meet 100% of compliance across the board. Really focus in on that policy, procedure, and implementation area. Because if you can show that you are meeting 100% compliance, meaning your policies are covering the, the implementation requirements, your procedures are documented and can be understood by the employees performing them, and that they can be tested for operational effectiveness, you are going to, to pass that control. You are going to meet compliance with that control. Now, there are a certain percentage of measured and managed that should be in place in order to achieve certification, but it's, it's really important to understand that the focus needs to be placed on the policy, procedure, and implementation. Because from definitely from a smaller company perspective, even a larger company that may not have 100% coverage of all of these controls, really focusing in on those three key areas will help you achieve certification. Thank you so much for joining us today for this video. We really hope that you found the information useful. Next up in our video series, we're going to give you steps one through five, things you should do right now to get yourself on your way to high trust compliance and certification. So we look forward to seeing you then. If you need information right now, you need to reach out to Kirkpatrick Price directly. Please feel free to uh, click the link below and we would love to hear from you. We'd love to see you in our next video.